Welcome back again today, friends, for my massive freezer cooking day, where we are preparing over 200 servings of food for my large family of 11. And the very first thing that I am doing is getting the kitchen cleaned up. We are washing out some bowls that I had used for another big cooking project the day before. I'm scrubbing those bowls down. We still have the 40 quarts of bone broth that we roasted the bones for in my previous big cooking video. Those are going on my island there and they had been going over 24 hours at this point and we're going to let them continue until the end of this day and then we'll take the next steps with them but that should give us about 40 quarts or so of broth to can so that is fantastic of course well it could be more it could be closer to 30 by the time i remove the volume of the bones and all that but we'll get there when we get there the broth is not included in my meal servings for my family but that is yet an additional item that we are working through roasting and cooking down and turning the beef bones from the full cow i bought last fall into broth for my family we are having a big batch cooking and meal prep afternoon and evening we're gonna see how far we can get i have this list i've been working down and it seems every day i add a few more things to the list but i do have some meals that i big batch cook the meat for a couple days some freezer meals they really those those have to be done today they just really do okay and then there's these other things. So I'm gonna prioritize and we're gonna jump on in. So the very first thing that I am getting going on this day is I'm getting milk that I had frozen and then we defrosted it. This was grass-fed A2A2 milk from my early June Azure Standard order. Once that order of milk got close to or a little after its expiration date that was on each jug, I froze the rest for milk and also for fresh drinking whenever we would need it. It does take two to three days usually uh, from the freezer in the refrigerator to defrost fully. Now I bought all my milk in advance. I used to buy 15 gallons at a time and keep seven in my, when I only had a second refrigerator in my second fridge. And then I kept the other seven to eight jugs in the top freezer of that extra refrigerator back when I had smaller children, you know, five children, ages 12 and under, and I only truly went to the store for a big shop once a month. I always froze that milk in the jugs, defrosted it in the jugs, never had any issues. I have received some questions on these smaller jugs that I'm freezing from Azure if I need to, you know, pour a little milk out or do anything different. I've had no trouble with their jugs either. I, fr I freeze them completely sealed and whole. I defrost them. Now the bottom, you know, won't be perfectly flat and I do have a plastic container I set them down in, but I defrost them and then I've been using them to do two to three gallons of yogurt uh, every week for my family. And that's also wonderful grass-fed A2A2 yogurt for my family. And then they just add whatever toppings that they would like. So we did get that yogurt going in the Instant Pot. It has to cook uh, for about an hour and then it cools. And then I put it on for a longer yogurt cycle. So that'll continue on through this day. Now, right now, I had got two big heads of cabbage from my local small town general store, and I had one head of cabbage left. And I had had on my big batch cooking list there on the whiteboard to do some egg roll in the bowl and make it ahead and have it in the freezer ready to go. Now, I have frozen many, many cabbage meals. I have frozen ahead many cabbage meals. I have some deconstructed cabbage roll, casserole recipes up over on largefamilytable.com. And of course, you know, I love to do the cabbage lasagnas. I'm going to mix all my egg roll in a bowl components together. We're going to add the sesame seed oil and the spices. We're going to add the already cooked ground beef. We're going to do this egg roll in a bowl and freeze it in gallon size freezer bags. Whenever I am ready to use it for my family, I will set it out of the freezer into the refrigerator the day before. And then that following evening, I will just cook it in my 17 inch lodge cast iron right there on the stove top, cook the cabbage through. That'll also reheat the meat and everything. It'll be fantastic. 
I, it's, I love it and I love having it prepped and ready to go. Now, we get three gallon bags of the egg roll in a bowl meals ready. I count those three meals as 36 servings, so about 12 servings per bag, because whenever I feed this to my family, we will also do steamed rice with it. You can additionally add, you know, like right now, I have a lot of squash and zucchini from the garden. So on the days that we do this, I might also saute up some vegetables from the garden. We'll just see, but having the ground beef cooked, having the cabbage chopped up, having all the seasonings mean I can add an additional component to stretch this meal further. I have definitely cooked up a bunch of cabbage, you know, bunch of ground beef, and have cooked a big batch like this ahead like all at one time. And then we eat it for, of course, dinner that night. And then it would be for lunch and dinner servings for the following days, uh, just until we run through it. But in this instance, I am going to freeze it in three different one gallon bags. And I just know that on the nights we have that, I'm going to need to most likely, as I said, do steamed rice to stretch the meal for us. Now, what I am doing here is I am just picking apart my individual cabbage leaves in our big 30 quart mega mama bowl that we've been, we've been using these bowls, I think since 2016 or so maybe 2017. A lot of you asked me where I have gotten these bowls and I have ordered them right off Amazon. I have them linked at amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash jmorell and you can order your own Mega Mama bowl and have it shipped right to your door. Now in this kitchen I do have them. I just keep them on my island because I use them multiple times throughout the week. In my baby kitchen here at this same house they actually fit in a double cabinet that I had. I had all my bowls stacked up in there. You can look through my old big cooking videos to see because there was just nowhere to keep them out at. And then at my forest house, I also had, I believe it was my cabinets directly under my stove there that I was able to keep these big bowls in. And I have since now upgraded. I have four of these 30 quart bowls, but when I really get going with big cooking projects, man, I, I need every one of them. So the seasonings I'm adding in, the green powder is that homemade Egyptian walking onion powder that we made together about four to six weeks ago. And I've also put in the onion powder and the garlic powder. I got from Azure Standard. I did have a bag of carrots. I had not planned to put carrots in it this go round, but I was thinking as I was in the middle of chopping that cabbage, okay, what else do I have that's perfect in egg roll in a bowl? And as I've been getting to know my new mid-sized Jersey cow, Miss Hazel, my mom had suggested that I take a carrot out every day to hand feed her, and eventually she would get used to eating carrots. So we kind of got off the carrot kick, though, because I had my cabbage that got eaten by worms and I had some dinosaur kale and some broccoli that had bolted. I hand fed her those as long as we had them in the garden and so I thought I'm going to go ahead and use some of those carrots in our egg roll in a bowl but everything has been going wonderful with Hazel. Actually we just had a farmer come out recently and he AI'd her. So if that took that means we should have a baby calf on our property about next May. We'll have to see. The reason we went ahead and had her bred is, wow, have you ever experienced a cow heat cycle? <laughs> well, we have twice now. And it was like, yeah, she needs to be bred now because <laughs> we have to be able to handle her. So we made it through and we'll see, see if that whole process took, but there's a little bonus uh, happy homestead update for you. So I'm just using this hand grater here and we are just going through each of the carrots and I'm not taking any of my fingers or fingernails with me. We don't need that kind of extra protein, haha. -ha. And I have the pre-cooked grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef that we bought from our local JNL Green Farm here in the Shenandoah Valley. I had that cooked and drained and ready to go. So here I'm adding in what is left of my sesame oil, and I'm also adding in a bunch of liquid aminos. Liquid aminos is a healthy soy sauce alternative, and I've been using it instead of soy sauce for, I want to say, at least five years. I probably started using it 10 years ago, but the last five years or so... 
I've used that instead of soy sauce. I learned about that first from the Trim Healthy Mama ladies uh, way back when I lived in the farmhouse. And that is something that you can find at your local Walmart. You can order it through Azure. Uh, it's nice to have on hand. And so we mixed up all of that egg roll in a bowl. So it's just prepped and ready to go. Looking at this, I think, oh, some purple cabbage would also be lovely, but I am filling each of my gallon bags with it. And they are already labeled. And those, as I said, they'll just go right down in the freezer. I'm going to also, uh, well, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for now. And later we will make the trip to the basement, to the grocery store in our basement, haha. -ha and the freezer meal freezer that we are working on getting filled again and we will get those put up so the 30 quart bowl was good to us yet again and our ziploc gallon freezer bags were also good to us now on this day we are also going to do several philly cheesesteak casseroles we are going to do many 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 homemade loaves of sourdough bread we are also going to do a gigantic recipe for big batch peach crisp that's also freezer friendly. We are additionally doing a whole lot, a lot of sourdough pizza prepped and ready for the freezer. We have so many good, good, good food projects coming up. And right now I just took, and right now I take my yogurt out of the instant pot. I set the hot pot on a cutting board on the counter there and we will let it cool and I use my digital thermometer uh, I've read different places it should take an hour for it to cool sometimes mine takes a little longer I'm so excited because there's so many big sourdough projects I wanted to get going on and so I fed my starter super mega <laughs> twice yesterday and again this morning just to get enough going for the sourdough projects that I wanna do. So I do have five of the artisan loaves that are doing their long ferment in my refrigerator and I will bake those tomorrow. But this evening, I want to get at least five more going. This is how I was a large family mama feeding all the people that I do all day, every day. I'm working to get ahead on the sourdough game too. Again, my goal is to not buy bread at the grocery store anymore. It takes some work as far as the sourdough, just some forethought. So I want to get at least five more of those artisan rolls going. I also want to get, and I have to do, I'll do my math on this and I'll share it with you. And I also want to get several bowls of the pizza dough fermenting. Then I also want to get sourdough fermenting for hot dog buns coming in a couple days. That's my new thing. So, so far I've, I've mastered, of course I haven't really mastered it, but I'm a little more than a week in. I'm doing those artisan rolls every day, and I've done the pizza dough several times. So, I'm gonna do the pizza dough again. Check, check, got those. Now we're gonna add in the hot dog buns. As you can see, it's nice and bubbly. I was reading today, it should be thick, like warm peanut butter. So I think we have that going on for sure here. And I also, I have this bigger jar that I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to because feel like I need a bigger container and my sourdough ladies that I'm learning from online have much bigger containers for a lot of big sourdough projects. I was listening to my friend Sarah from Our Tribe of Many and she was saying what held her back the other times when she had tried to get her starters going and I, I related to what she said is she said she just felt like it would take a whole lot to do the big projects that she needed to do. And I know recently, and Sarah mentioned this too, she had chatted with Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone and I was chatting with Lisa. We all, we all were getting a sourdough help from Lisa and she just really encouraged us to make a lot of it. And that way you have enough for your projects. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, thank you for the handholding. So. I will at least get this going in uh, this much bigger Super Mega Mama container here. This is one that the lid had broke off of, which is just fine because I've just been keeping a towel on top of it. So that will work nice for us. And so 
now that we are done with the egg roll in the bowl, I'm gonna just put that in my refrigerator up here for now. And now we are gonna get started doing as many as we can of the low carb Philly cheese steak casserole. And I'm just getting my starter covered up with a towel there, getting that out of the way. And I am working through picking up, cleaning the kitchen now before we move on to the next project. So I put the egg roll in a bowl, freezer bags, in the refrigerator and now I'm going to give my big cooking, my Mega Mama bowls, a good rinse out with some hot soapy water and get them ready for the next cooking project. Now, I was going to do a few different low carb, sugar free, gluten free recipes. I was gonna do my Philly cheesesteak casserole and I was also gonna do a low carb pizza casserole. I think I had a few, a few more than that, but I just, I decided to just focus on the low carb Philly cheesesteak casserole. But I will have the egg roll in a bowl, my longtime big batch recipe linked in the description, and also my Philly cheesesteak casserole linked in the description. I believe the Philly cheesesteak casserole, the way that it's written out on my blog, it's like one for now, one for later, so you'll get two 9x13s. But of course, I'm going for gold and I'm doing four on this day. As I said, I was going to also do the low carb pizza casserole. I was basically gonna get two pans of each, but I just decided Philly cheesesteak casserole, I could do a big batch. One, you know, less recipe ingredients to get out. I know that we all love it. And so I was just going to focus on that one instead, but I will link the low carb pizza casserole for you down below. It's just one of my, how I adapt and flow. You know, what am I feeling like cooking on my big batch cooking days? I'm like, I'm just gonna focus on the Philly cheesesteak recipe because I had many other things I wanted to go get going on this day. And on this day, typical JMRL style, I did not get started until about four or so. So we really do work through getting a huge amount of servings done in this big afternoon and evening big batch cooking time. And um, right now what I am doing is chopping up some onions here that I'm going to get sauteing even though the ground beef is already cooked for the Philly cheesesteak casserole. So I had the ground beef done, egg roll in a bowl, Philly cheesesteak casserole. We had done this and it's in one of my recent big batch cooking videos. We had done this ahead and today was the time to use the meat but I'm sauteing the onions now. And then we're going to add in the many pounds of already cooked ground beef and our other ingredients from there. I also just drop in some already minced garlic and we're just sauteing those up in the 17 inch lodge cast iron pan on the Mega Mama stove. And I'm just going through now and wiping down my countertop. I do have some buckwheat pancake mix on the counter there uh, that I had got in an Azure order over the last few months and I wanted to go ahead and do the big batch buckwheat pancakes. Those are on my list. We don't get to it on this day, but it's sitting there looking at me and I want to, but I'll just tell you now we don't get to it. But I do feel like we did a lot in this six or so hours that we focus on big batch cooking here. As I mentioned, I did have five bowls of sourdough doing the log ferment that I had prepped the day before in the refrigerator and I was gonna cook those the following day. And on this day, we actually, we go for gold. So see some things I pull back on and other things I'm like, ah, let's push the gas on this. <laughs> so we push the sourdough gas pedal for our sourdough summer and I prep and get 10 loaves of sourdough ready. So we'll be doing that coming up. And right here, I am just taking my chunks of sour cream. Now I know this looks like, and it is, a lot of sour cream, however, this is for 48 servings. This is for four big batch meals for my big family. And of course, we'll have this with a side of garden salad and or uh, some lovely sourdough bread with some butter potentially, just whatever the person needs, however they would like to doctor it up. Since I am more on the Trim Healthy Mama side of things, uh, for most of my meals, I would have the Philly cheesesteak casserole I'd have a, a serving of that, and then I'd have a bunch of greens and garden fresh veggies on my plate, and that would be my meal. But children, very well, might mix sourdough with this. This is a meal that you can also add other side items with it, however you would like to do it. But in this 17-inch cast iron pan, this is all the fixins 
for four nine by 13 big batch Philly cheesesteak casserole meals and melting down the cream cheese with the meat and the sauteed onions it's just it's so good it is so very very good and then we top this when we're done and once we get it in the pans we top it with either sliced provolone cheese that Travis had done uh, or a combination of pepper jack cheese that he had already sliced with the cheese slicer there and I'm going through and adding more cream cheese to it but as I say if you don't want to do four pans at one time you can do it one for now one for later that recipe will be linked down below you could do two 9 by 13 pans and if you're a smaller family one 9 by 13 pan let's just say you're a family of six well that would give you enough for dinner one night and then the other six servings could be lunch the following day and that's just one pan and then you have your other pan in the freezer for whenever you look at your calendar this is how i use freezer meals anyway it's different week to week now we definitely have had seasons where we eat down the freezer meals and that's all we can do and that's why they're there and it's exciting it's wonderful and then we have seasons more often where i look what is our week what is our agenda who's coming over who's going where who has appointments what activities or field trips or lake days do we have and so i'll pick for dinner as an example you know there could be three to four nights that we're using freezer meals and then we could have a night where i cook up big batch special requested something and it, obviously if it's a favorite we don't mind eating the same thing for dinner two or even three nights in a row now with these meals how i'm preparing them these are not meals that we are going to have here you know for two nights of dinners and two days of lunches uh, one nine by 13 pan is not going to feed us like that one nine by 13 pan is dinner that is it plus their side items served with it but if i was doing a big stock pot like a 20 quart or 30 quart stock pot of one of our favorite things and we just ate down on that uh you know for two full days for lunches and dinners that would be an example on how i would feed us on the days where we're not doing freezer meals i never ever cook like if i'm if i'm cooking <laughs> i cook enough to where it's something that we love and i just know this is a favorite no complaints we're going to have this for dinner for the next two nights and there will also be you know five to six to 11 family members who love it so much they don't mind it for lunch servings or they're going to switch it up some way for lunch we have food here people are free to you know make those choices however they need them and if it's something that it goes great the first night great for lunches but i have time to do something different the next night or let's say we have dinner plans out or family coming over if we're just doing something different for whatever reason well i've big batch cooked ahead so i also i've basically done one meal for now one meal for later i can take what is left and freeze it and that's future meals so you really just have to with doing freezer cooking massive freezer cooking and also daily freezer cooking with my one for now one for later method or i also like to do one for now two for later and i do have that method in different big batch freezer meal guides over on shop.largefamilytable.com it's whatever works for you people are fed dinner is made and i tell you getting food in the freezer for my family for later it helps me and it might help you too <laughs> just just ask yourself if i had five dinners in my freezer would that be helpful and i'll answer for you yes it would so what i'm doing here is i'm doing a mega mama snack this is one of my favorite trim healthy mama on plan snacks right now where i do four wasa crackers two light laughing cow cheeses and i divide that over the four and then i do low fat cottage cheese on top and it's considered an e-snack if that's your thing it's so great it's so filling lots of chewing and crunching <laughs> it's it's just uh one of my favorites so there you go uh and here i am putting the cheese slices over each of the four nine by 13 pans and i'm just doing a layer or two the cheese is sliced very thin so it's helpful though whenever we buy the big rolls or logs of cheese and then travis sits down and slices uh, several gallon bags worth especially when i'm doing this cooking 
And then I have the cheese ready for recipes. And then we will also have cheese available for snacking and such. And then believe it or not, we have days and weeks with no cheese, <laughs> with no cheese out or prepped and ready to go. But because this cheese is so thin, I am doing a double layer. And there you go, that'll go in the freezer. And again, I will set it out the day before and we'll cook it up when we need it and add sides. So here, look at those beautiful peaches. So the day before, one of my teens chopped up a bushel of peaches. Now, I don't think I bought a bushel. They chopped up what was left of that bushel after a week of kids eating peaches, pretty much. And so those are all chopped and ready to go. And now I am going to do several pans of big batch peach crisp. Don't ask me how to do a smaller version of it. Uh, you won't find that on this channel. I, I only I only know Mega and Lots. So I am doing five big pans of peach crisp. Now I also, within those five pans, two pans are those big 10 by 15 pans. And then the other pans are nine by 13. And so what I do, we're, we've got our peaches laid out in every pan. I've got my butter, ready to go. I have other ingredients and I'll go through the whole big batch recipe for you. But what I do is I bake up one for the kids to eat on this night. Yes, my kids got 9 p.m. peach crisp by the time we were done with that. And that's okay. That That's part of being my kid. <laughs> if you're my kid and live in my house, sometimes you get peach crisp at 9 p.m. A little bedtime peach crisp, haha. Uh, but one pan for the most part. They ate about three quarters of it on this night. And then the following day, I cooked up the second pan. I cooked it up this night, but I heated it through again. I warmed it and we had company over. So we had peach crisp for about 15. And on the second day, my family also had it with ice cream. Uh, very delicious, very sweet. And so my big batch peach crisp recipe. And remember, this is also freezer friendly. So if you wanted to do the five big pans full and have one for now and four for later, you can certainly go for that. We ended up using two on this weekend and I put three in the freezer for later and we're going to love it later. So the recipe is half a bushel of peaches, 10 cups of all purpose flour, eight cups of brown sugar, four cups of butter, a fourth of a cup of cinnamon, an eighth of a cup of nutmeg, an eighth of a cup of salt, and eight cups of oatmeal. And that made two 10 by 15 pans and three nine by 13 pans. And so with baking the peach crisp, I bake it at 350 degrees for about 25 to 35 ish minutes. Now, after this is frozen and defrosted and reheated, it will most likely be more of a crumble texture on the top. You know, might not be so crispy. That's okay. It's still delicious peaches and flavors and sugar and buttery topping. It's just lovely. Um, I probably should have softened my butter a little more before I got doing this. The butter in our refrigerator upstairs was out and I had to have a kiddo go downstairs and get me some butter from the freezer and I had it sitting out for a bit and I just went ahead and put it in the bowl without thinking and then I was like, okay, wait. <sighs> do I pull it out and put it in the microwave to soften it a little bit? Can I work through this? And then I thought, okay, I'll cut it some. So this, this is, hey, watch me make a mess. Um, but I just go through and I'm trying to cut the butter down and I do work on stirring it all up together. But yeah, just soften your butter a little bit next time. In the middle of this, I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, I should have done this differently but it does all work out in the end. It's however you wanna handle your butter. Again, it is eight cups of oatmeal that we're mixing in to make our topping. And I said eight cups of brown sugar. I didn't actually have any brown sugar. What I used on this day is I used the organic cane sugar from Azure, but you know you can also make your own homemade brown sugar. You could just separately add molasses into this recipe. It's very forgiving. And I'm just making myself measure out my oatmeal. You could even cut the sugar on this recipe if you would like. It's very, very sweet. But again, this recipe alone is made 
making five huge pans of this delicious peach dessert. Between the two 10 by 15 pans and the three 9 by 13 pans, this big batch peach dessert cooking time is well over 60 servings. I usually say a 9 by 13 of anything is around 12 servings, and the 10 by 15 pans are more than a 9 by 15. But again, no one in my house is complaining if we got actually more than 60 servings for this delicious peach dessert. And as I said, we did the two 10 by 15s over two days, and we fed 11 folks one day and 15 folks the next. And it is delicious. Anyway, you like to fix it up. And all I do here is I'm just adding my toppings onto the peaches. It's super easy. You could do this with apples or any fruit that you would like to switch the peaches out for. It's delicious. It's great with ice cream. All the ways you want to cook it up. And now I'm going to get my two pans of peach crisp in the oven. As I shared, one I let my kids and my family have on that evening, and then the other one I just heat through again the following day for lunch. And now my yogurt has cooled, and I'm adding in my starter yogurt, which was a little bit to help get it going, and I am whisking it down, and then I will let it cook and do the yogurt process overnight. Some of you have shared you do the process for eight hours in your instant pot or you do the yogurt setting for 10 hours and so on this evening I decided to do the 10 hour process now I'm checking out my sourdough starter here and we are going to do the next big thing and what I am doing is I'm seeing exactly how many cups of starter I have available and so I drain my starters down so I have enough for every loaf of bread that I'm doing it requires half a cup of starter so I get my starter poured out into my measuring cups. I needed five full cups of starter and then we'll measure it out half cups from there and I have that and then I leave about half a cup of starter in each of my sourdough starter jars and then I add in a whole cup of flour and a whole cup of water and stir that up as well. I do have exciting news for future weeks. I did get two of those wonderful Danish whisk and yes for stirring my starter that is so much better than just a wooden spoon but that's okay. We'll get there right? But you'll see those new whisk added to the Mega Mama kitchen in coming weeks and so I'm getting my second jar there and feeding it with flour and water and we will get it covered with a towel and let it sit there and like it so there's our first peach crisp done and the other one I'm just going to move up higher in my oven and now I am serving out everybody who would like it in my family which is everybody and I'm even eating some oh yes I just could not miss this opportunity there was um, a wonderful THM approved peach crisp recipe I found over on my friend's blog, northernnester.com. I was going to also do a THM version, and you know what? I just couldn't get it done with everything else I was spinning, and that's okay. I had a plate of regular old peach crisp, and I am not mad about it. So I do, because it is so hot, I do go ahead and scoop out everybody's plates of their peach crisp on this evening and as I said we we're having bedtime peach crisp but that's okay and I love our um, cute little pioneer woman cow plates we found those at Walmart a while ago and just my plates are uh, a mix match of all the different pioneer woman plates that Walmart generally has so when I see a new one I'll get one or two and we will add it in and then you know many days around here no shame in our large family game we are using paper plates even with that we have a lot of dishes all the time but that does help out a little bit and so there is everybody's yummy homemade plate of peach crisp and there's just a few little servings extra on that evening and while they are eating their peach crisp I woofed mine down while I was serving theirs to cool I get going working on getting my 10 loaves of sourdough going in their bowl. So I start by putting in a half a cup of sourdough starter in each bowl. Now, futuristically, what I want to do is 
try to go big with my sourdough and do this, you know, do Lisa's recipe times 10 and just do it in my, maybe my mega mama bowl or maybe my 20 quart bowl and try to just do one big batch that I then divide down because I know that sourdough bakeries, uh, you know, from my extensive TikTok sourdough watching experience, I know that they do big batches and then cut them down. But I'm not there yet and that's okay. It's easier for me right now in my sourdough summer learning process to just get 10 bowls going and to do the process 10 times. And every time I'm doing this, I'm learning more. And so what I was doing on this evening, because I did have kids in the kitchen and they were eating sugar at bedtime, they were having a fun time in here while I'm doing this, I didn't want to get off on my cup counting of flour. That was the next thing I was adding in. So I just go through and it's, I believe, three and a third cups. Look at Lisa's recipe, it'll be linked down below. It's her same basic sourdough bread recipe that I just continue to make and make and make. It's helping me incredibly. And so I just, to start, I was going through and doing one cup in each bowl and then I go through and do three cups in each bowl and then I come back around and I do the third of a cup in each bowl and cups and cups and cups, <laughs> but we are definitely working through it. Also, each bowl got a cup. I'm going to say a third again. I'm not looking at the recipe at the moment, but a cup and a little more of water. And then each bowl also got some salt. So be sure to check my description and click on Lisa's link to go over and give her recipe a try for yourself. Again, the reason I love Lisa's recipes is she has the weighted ingredients if you were going to weigh them, but she also has the cups and tablespoons, which is helpful for where I am right now. I would love to add in using the kitchen scale and weighing our ingredients, and I do think we'll get there, but right now my goal is to just feed my starter and keep it alive and make so many sourdough recipes in the coming days once i'm done with this big batch massive freezer meal cooking day i also do get yay i get the sourdough homemade hamburger buns made we also do coming up you'll see this in a video here real soon we do homemade sourdough tortillas where i learn i really want a tortilla press <laughs> so uh, lots of fun sourdough adventures coming and like i said just learn more about sourdough and how it acts and how to feed it and how to care for it i feel like saying it's not very complicated because obviously if i can do it that means anyone can do it and do it better um, it's not complicated, but it does take some mental space and it does take some time. From my experience so far, I can't start my sourdough and bake my loaves on the same day. I need to work ahead, uh, but we do accomplish in a matter of two days. The day before I prepped five loaves that are now at, that, at this time in the video doing their long ferment, and now we're prepping 10 more. So in two days, I did prep 10 loaves of sourdough for my family. Now we're going through two of these a day easy, some days three. So pretty much I prepped a week's worth of sourdough for us. Uh, we are able to get several loaves of this sourdough into the freezer. So out of this 10 that we're doing, I saved out um, about five and then we got five in the freezer for upcoming just for whenever I would have, you know, times where I get behind or I can't prep ahead and all of those good, happy homemaker things that we think we can do, but then life happens. <laughs> so I wanna continue to work ahead and get sourdough in the freezer for coming weeks when I haven't been able to prep ahead too much. And again, that's what my shirt says. That's why I love freezer meals and have loved them for two decades now <laughs> because I know they're so helpful. And so I'm just going through now. This is where the Danish whisk in the, in the future here will be so helpful 
and I've already experienced the wonders with it. Uh, but right now I'm just using what I have and I'm working with my wooden spoons, trying to get this first stir going. And it just gets to the point where I'm like, I just need to get my hands in here and go from there. Now, once we get each of these bowls going, even though it's later in the evening now, like I said, I fed my kids 9 p.m. peach crisp, okay? And uh, after that, you know, they had a, a little bit more free time and headed to bed because we did have church the following morning because I committed, this is where this particular sourdough loaves need work on the front end. So I mix everything and then I'm going to let it rest for about 30 minutes. And then I come back and do a stretch and fold. Then it rests for 30 minutes. Then I come back and do a stretch and fold again, another 30 minute rest. And then I come back and do a final stretch and fold. And then after that, I roll each of the little loaves and I get them on, I'm supposed to get them on like a floured tea towel and cover them and get them in the fridge for six to 12 hours. And then actually, wait, 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 flower tea towel. <laughs> I cover them. I don't get them in the refrigerator. See, learning, learning, let them sit on the counter for six to 12 hours. And so my plan was on this night that they were going to sit out overnight. And then in the morning, I would finish the process, tuck them all in, get them in the refrigerator for the extended up to 15 hour longer ferment. Now that is supposed to be very good for continuing to break down the gluten and for gluten intolerant folks. Again, from what I've read and what I've experienced over the last few weeks, the longer fermenting process is good for breaking down the gluten. And so those with gluten intolerance, it helps them be able to handle traditional sourdough. So something to look into. So while the bread is resting, I have my watch set for 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get the pizza dough going in my KitchenAid stand mixer. Now Lisa's pizza dough recipe is also super simple. It's just a few ingredients. I'll have it linked down below. So after the dough goes in the stand mixer for about 10 minutes, it's then just a matter of me getting it in an olive oil greased bowl and letting it sit for eight hours or so. A lot of times, and in Lisa's recipe, she talks about doing it the morning of pizza night. I've already made this recipe and we've had several fresh pizza nights with it. So now I'm going to freeze the dough. I have done a lot of baking and dough prep and freezing and defrosting later and then baking with it. I've done a lot of freezer biscuits and pizza dough and muffins and pancakes and all those good things. And I did not see any reason why this sourdough pizza recipe would not also be freezer friendly. I did read up online on some people who frozen raw but prepped sourdough dough and everything reads that it should work out just fine. So based on that and my experience in the past, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go for this and freeze it. Um, so I do make a total of her recipe four times. So I make four of the pizza dough rolls. In my experience, each one of those rolls is then divided out and it makes four personal pizzas, which for my kids, one personal pizza, especially when it's sourdough and all those fantastic ingredients, uh, that's a meal. My younger early elementary children, like my, my two-year-old, well, that's very, very much young, but my two-year-old, uh, my then five, now six-year-old, my eight-year-old, and even my 10-year-old won't finish a whole one, but they will have their half or even for the youngest three quarters portion that they can just finish up for lunch the next day. It's a very popular item. My teens and adults will eat a whole personal size sourdough pizza and that'll be a meal for them. So here I am doing my stretch and folds, my first set of stretch and folds on my sourdough loaves that are going there. But back to the pizza, I, my plan was if I do four of the sourdough pizza rolls that that will be 16 personal pizzas in my freezer for later. So I will just take out two loaves the day before. And so on the day that we want to have fresh sourdough pizza, uh, especially if it's a day where I'm not able to do the 10 minute prep in the morning, we will have that defrosting. And at dinner time, we will then divide out do our pizza toppings and bake 
as usual, but the dough prep is already done. That may not sound like a worthwhile time savings to some folks, but again, busy mama life, uh, It I will use those 16 personal pizzas and I will be thankful <laughs> that the dough is ready and we are ready and we are able to use it. And so that's just part of me working on filling my freezer and getting ahead on having sourdough in my freezer ready to go. Yes, it does require me to do big batch sourdough baking when I'm able, but then we will have sourdough in the freezer for times when I'm not able to work with it. And you know what? Those times are going to happen. And I, we also have many days where I do make it fresh, bake it fresh, you know, in real time. Now I did 10 loaves earlier in this week and we've had our 10 loaves as we've needed them and I've just baked them. I've done it a couple different ways. I have baked 10 loaves at the beginning of the week and we have just used those throughout the week. I have also done it where I've just baked two to three of the already prepped and fermented rolls from my refrigerator, done two or three each morning. And then I've of course had it where I've prepped and done the work of just two or three at a time that we've used. But I'm expanding, I'm, <laughs> I'm moving forward and doing a uh, Mega Mama style sourdough. And so right now I am just, I am taking a minute to try to get the dough off my hands and I'm stretching my back. How do you like that? So the pizza dough, I have now finished four of the rolls of pizza and I have it covered with a white kitchen towel and it is just going to sit there overnight and like it along with the yogurt that's going to continue cooking and also along with the 10 loaves of sourdough that we're working through our stretch and folds but that will also be ready to bake fresh and be ready to go in the freezer. And with the sourdough for the bread, I don't at the, on this big cooking day, I don't take the bread and just freeze the uncooked roll. What I'm working towards doing and what I work through the following day is I bake all 10 at one time and I freeze several and then I leave several in the refrigerator for the coming days. We now use our electric bread knife on the sourdough and I have a big Rubbermaid container. You've probably seen it. I've used it for years and years. I think I have two of them. It's good for storing like what's left of big batch spaghetti sauce and such. And so I, we slice down, you know, let's say three to four of the loaves of sourdough. We have them in the container in the towel and now my family just knows to take that container out and we'll say you know get two slices of sourdough out uh, to toast for a sandwich or to have with some peanut butter or whatever you know think of all the delicious things you can do with sourdough i still have not done sourdough french toast because we haven't had enough of the bread around yet <laughs> like enough you know, extra to do French toast with it, but that's definitely on my upcoming sourdough summer to-do list. So what I'm doing here, and hey, look, those dishes grew. <laughs> uh, but what I'm doing here is I'm taking the beef bones. Now on the day before, in another big batch freezer meal video, we got this 40 quarts of beef bone broth. We, we blanched the bones, which was something new, and we roasted them. I've done that many times before. And now we have been cooking that broth since the day before. And now I am removing all the bones. And we are going to, at this point, let the broth cool. And I'm going to have my husband help me before he heads to bed. I'm gonna have him help me get those two roasters in the bottom of the Mega Mama refrigerator. They fit just fine. Uh, the lids won't fit on them, but we can cover them and they will just sit there and cool. And then following day, we will skim the fat off the top and get ready, go through the process of getting them ready to can. But that's how far we get with it on this evening. Look now, same outfit. This is the morning before church. I wanted to get all of these loaves into the refrigerator for their longer ferment. And I wanted to get the pizza dough wrapped and ready for the freezer. So I don't have actual footage of the end result for that. I, I don't know what happened to my footage. I remember recording it, but 
can't find it now, but I do have a picture that I'll share here for you that shows all the bread out on the table with it wrapped and ready to go for the freezer. So total on this big batch, massive freezer meals, afternoon and evening, we did make over 200 servings. And how I got my math on that is we have nine freezer meals total as far as, and when I say meal, I mean a meal like a dinner time meal for my 11 people which includes adults teens middle school elementary down to a toddler okay so we got three bags of the egg roll in the bowl and then i told you that on those nights we will have that with fresh steamed rice and garden vegetables we have four pans of the philly cheesesteak casserole we got 10 loaves of sourdough, but I don't even include that in the 200 servings that I'm referring to. We also got six big batch pans of peach crumble, peach crisp, any way you want to swing it there. And then we got four rolls of the sourdough pizza, but each roll breaks down to four personal pizzas. So it's a total of two dinners for my family because I would use two of the rolls to make eight personal size pizza uh, for my kids pretty much. But I count that as two dinners for my family. So nine freezer meals, six desserts, two of those desserts are for the weekend, four for the freezer. We also worked through processing the 40 quarts of bone broth. We also did a gallon of yogurt. And then as I have shared, we also did the 10 loaves of sourdough. But where are the 200 servings? Okay, so not included. In the 200 servings, I just, my brain couldn't even get into. As I mentioned, the 10 loaves of sourdough bread is not included in that number. And the 40 quarts of bone broth we are working through is not included in that number. I broke down the servings on the seven nine by 13 pans, which as I say, one nine by 13 is uh, usually about 12 or so. And so we had 84 servings between the seven pans and bags with the egg roll in the bowl and the Philly cheesesteak casserole. We have 72 servings with the six pans of the big batch peach crisp. And of course, two of those pans are bigger than a nine by 13, but I'm just gonna kind of let that go so my brain does not explode. <laughs> and then we have 16 personal pizzas. And so those items together come to 172 servings. And then we additionally, and my brain is not going too deep down this, but I know it's more than 200 servings when we add this on. You can also add in the 10 loaves of sourdough bread and the gallon of yogurt. And then we also have the 40 quarts of beef broth that we are going to use in other cooking and other meals. Um, so somewhere between we'll just uh, trying to throw a number on it 175 to 200 servings from this big batch massive freezer meal cooking time for my family of 11 i also feel like i'll get a question because the two rolls of the sourdough pizza dough makes eight personal pizzas and so if i'm feeding 11 people there how that would look is that might be a night where my husband and I are eating something different or maybe we're going out to dinner and a movie or you know younger kids maybe they're splitting half and half and they just won't have sourdough pizza left over um, the next day for lunch so far I've made Lisa's sourdough pizza recipe I think three or four times and it has always worked out um, but again I'm not there personally, you know, eating eight personal sourdough pizzas. Um, although I have had a piece of it and it's absolutely delicious. But on that evening, you know, like squash and zucchini is my favorite. So I might saute myself up that uh, with two farm fresh eggs or, or just something. There's something else going on and kids need pizza and we're happy about it. So I'm doing the sourdough pizza in particular with my kids in mind. So thank you so much for hanging out with me as we did this big batch freezer meal cooking into the evening. We got more goodies in the freezer. We also have some food to eat fresh now. Sourdough school is continuing. I will have all the recipes linked for you down in the description below. I will have Lisa's sourdough recipes also linked for you below. 
Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you real soon with another brand new video and I'll chat with you in those comments below. Bye bye.